Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to get really far in the weeds and talk about oil. Oil. Wait a minute. This is a car channel. Alright, let's try this again. Let's talk about oil. Wait a minute. That's not oil. I mean, it's oil, but it's not really oil in the sense of what we're talking about today here, folks. Today we're going to change the oil on this 2022 Ford F-250 Super Duty, 7.3 liter. And then we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, why we change oil, when we change oil, and how to mathematically prove what the truly the longest life interval is that we can run oil. So first, I want to grab the jug of oil that I'll be using today and discuss a little bit, um, you know, about how it works and what it's rated for and just kind of oil in general. So first things first, put this down. First things first, we'll be running Mobile One Extended Performance 20,000 mile rated oil. Okay, if we read the back of this bottle, it says, protects for 20,000 miles between oil changes guaranteed, but, there's an asterisk. Let's go find the asterisk and see what that says. Um, <laughs> it's a scan for more information. So they don't put the asterisk on the jug, which to be honest with you, I don't really love. So we're gonna scan the QR code and see where that takes us. If your vehicle is covered by a warranty, follow the vehicle's oil life sensor or the oil change interval recommended in your owner's manual. So that's the one caveat, right? If your vehicle's under warranty, they're not guaranteeing that it's going to pass warranty, you know, if you're changing every 20K. So that's caveat number one. Other, the other caveat is extended performance motor oils provide guaranteed protection of critical engine parts up to 20,000 miles or one year, whichever comes first. Extreme service includes commercial and racing applications, frequent towing or hauling, extreme duty or dirty conditions, or excessive idling. So if you do any of those things, that 20,000 mile number comes down. Now we're starting to get a little bit weird, right? Because I tow with this vehicle, right? I mean, frequent towing, half the miles in this oil change, if not more, are with a trailer hooked up to it. So suddenly, does that 20,000 miles become 10? Well, we'll discuss that more later, but I just kind of wanted to give you that frame of reference. So first things first, let's get the oil changed on it. I'll just show you that quick. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. So I've got, Two jugs of this. It's eight quarts. These are five and five, so I'll use most of the two. And then I've got a Wix extended life filter that is also rated for 20,000 miles. Mobile One makes their own filter. I chose the Wix for no particular reason. So the number one thing I like to do first, because I'll forget, is just pull the oil fill hole cap. There's the word. Just so that makes the oil easier to drain out. It's also good to check your cap and make sure there's not a ton of milky looking solution on there especially on a vehicle like this that i this is my first oil change on it ever so now that that's off by the way tiny little cap they should have put an arm on it like they did in the chevy ls motors it, not come on ford do better do better the dipstick on this side is easy to get to though so i'll give them that i, I like that a lot that's good now we just gotta crawl under and, and uh, pull the drain plug i'm gonna guess it's a 15 millimeter hopefully i'm right all right so we're at the oil and here, seem to put everything in a nice location. I don't know if you can see anything, but not really a big deal. It's you know pretty straightforward, obviously. There we go. Wow, I'm gonna move this. I don't love the angle on this feller. Yeah, this is gonna suck. Something tells me I'm about to get covered in oil. I don't know why I'm so skeptical. No, nope, but almost. But almost. Okay, we gotta take our samples here, so bear with me. I'm gonna wait. You wanna wait for about halfway through the oil stream. Folks, we're going back in. This truck is actually lower than my Silverado because of the running boards and everything. I guess I kind of forget that. Even though it's a 2500, doesn't mean that it's necessarily taller in every way. But anywho, that's okay. We will sneak under here. Already pre-filled my old filter. Oh boy, I might have bought the wrong filter. 
Okay, so I thought the filter might be wrong, but it was not. It's just that it's a little bit bigger diameter, but the threads are the same, the o rings the same. It was, it was correct. So now we're putting our eight quarts of oil in here. And then we will obviously check our level, start the engine. All the classic things you would do on oil change. to a low idle and then we'll check it. Just the normal stuff. One thing I like to do as well is always take the key out of the ignition. You might even want to hide it from yourself, not hide it from yourself, but just make sure you can't accidentally start the thing when you don't have oil on it. Because that would be less than ideal. So let's see where we're at. If you read a lot of owner's manuals they'll say not to check the oil level until the engine's been sitting for about 10 minutes. So we are right about halfway on the dipstick. Let's do that one more time. So I'm gonna leave it right where it is for now. And if we really want to, we can dump that little last half quart in there. But that's it for a minute. Keep in mind, the oil goes down into the pan as the engine sits. And you really don't wanna overfill it if you don't have to. Yeah, so I'm about a little bit below my, a quarter inch below my finger, quarter inch below the fill line. So that's perfect. So we're just gonna leave that. Um, and I'll check it in a couple days. And uh, you know, if I need to add a little bit, I can, but I really shouldn't need to. Should be all set. So there you go. There's a uh, little oil change on the beast. And we'll talk about it. Hey, depending on who you talk to, there are a ton, ton of conflicting opinions on high mileage oils. You have people who are in the camp of every three to 5,000 miles, right? Which is kind of a standard that was held by owner's manuals for the last, you know, 40, 50 years or whatever, up until more recent years. And then you have people who are in the camp of, on the other extreme, you know, 25,000 mile AMS oil or whoever run it for freaking 20,000 miles, right? Whenever I watch videos on, on this topic, people seem to have a ton of opinions and almost no data to back up what they're saying. And, and I just doesn't, I, I won't stand for that. So I'm not gonna make a video like that. This is gonna be fact-based. You can take it for what it is and make your own decision and make your own grown-up decision accordingly. All right guys, so we got a lot of data to go over. So let's get started here. First things first, this is the kind of what the oil report looks like, right? The key points of this, you can look find these online too, but they give you all the vehicle information, mileage on the oil, <clears throat> dates and stuff like that. But mainly this comments blurb is super important because that's where they give you recommendations. So in this case, this is for their first oil sample we'll go over. They told me to try 9,000 miles next. They give you all the breakdowns of the material wear. And then if you pay for it, you get the TBN number and some other stuff. So that's where all this data is being derived from on this table. I just made the table to try to speed things up. Now keep in mind, for anybody who's watched the channel, you know that I had a 5.3 Silverado 2005, and then I eventually swapped a six liter LQ9 into it. So there's two data points for each, mainly because that's kind of the really all I had. I didn't do a ton of data sampling on this truck. So first oil sample I ever did was 5.3 and 152,000 miles. It was, 64.93 on the oil. We had Blackstone recommending that we try 9,000 9, miles next, um, taken in 2019. This was with Amsoil 5W30 Signature Series. The TBN was really good at 3.4, which is a signal that you have a lot of oil, engine oil life left. Um, that's the additive package is what the TBN is basically. Use case, light towing, mostly commuting around town driving, stuff like that. So two oil changes later, I did the same test, 170,000 miles. It was 91.59 per their recommendation. They said try 12,000 next because the TBN still looked good. It was the same brand oil, same use case. <clears throat> so that was all fine and dandy. We moved to the six liter LQ9. Um, so mind you, I swapped the 5.3 out at 222,000 miles. The reason I got rid of the 5.3 was because it cracked ahead 
and it was leaking coolant into the oil, actually. I had limped it along from about 85,000 miles when that happened to 222,000. <clears> the engine still really runs to this day. It's sitting in a shed, but it ran one part, LOL. Um, but seriously, it did. So, And there was no sludge inside that motor. I took things apart and took the valve covers off. I mean, it was perfectly fine. So objectively, this data proves to me, these two data points plus the real world scenario of that engine's lifespan, that the oil in this case was, you know, these higher change intervals were adequate for that specific engine under my specific use case. Here's where things get interesting though. Six liter, uh, when it had 16,000 miles on the engine, so that fresh motor, I screwed up guys, so you can flame me in the comments, but I accidentally didn't change the oil before 12,830 miles. I always like, as you can tell from these samples, even with the high mileage oils, I like to go sub 10,000, just to until I really know it anyway. They said try 5,000 next, which when I saw that, I was like, oh crap, because that was Mobile One Extended Performance, again, a 20,000 mile oil, so a little less, but still way over 12,000. However, the TBN was less than one, and I had been towing heavy with my camper for like half of the interval. So that's the thing, guys. Like you can you can wind up with I mean, these are roughly the same engine from the from a design perspective, right? They're very, very similar. Granted, the extra boom boom of the six liter might wear the oil out faster, hard to say. But uh, <clears throat> that's the thing, right? You go from them saying try 12,000 next, and it probably would have been fine given that TBN, but you change high mileage oil brands and you run that mileage and you tow, and suddenly you totally flip the script. So you gotta be a little careful with these things. Now the second time I had actually done 9,000, I would have done 5,000, except I had sent this sample in so late, I already had a fair amount of miles in that oil change. Again, a mistake on my part. However, they then said try 7,000 next, because this one looked pretty good. The TBN was 1.6, which does put it in range. So really this oil change was 100% safe for the truck. It was just right on the edge of kind of what you would want to do. Um, the previous one, this oil change, uh, also keep in mind, it was only like a little bit over. The wear metals were not catastrophically off. So I'll give you an example. The iron was a little bit high. It was 159 parts per million versus 19. So that would be the only thing that was kind of a slight concern. However, they had also mentioned in their comments, this is partly from break-in because it's such a new motor. You get residual materials from break-in. So it's not like I did major engine damage or anything like that by doing one extended life interval. But guess what? If I kept running this interval and kept towing, honestly, you'd eventually wear that engine out. So these are just things you got to think about. If you're going to run these higher mileage oils, you can do it. Despite what YouTuber, you know, you hear on YouTube about it's impossible to run, you're going to kill your engine. You won't. Kind of. And I say that because you got to be a little bit of a nerd about it because if you're not careful, you will do some potential damage. And so there is value in saying, just change it to 5,000, you'll never have an issue because what is the one similarity between all these intervals, right? They all would have been fine at 5,000 miles. Now, yes, would you have wasted good oil at 5,000 miles? Yes, you would have. Is it cheap insurance? Arguably, yeah. So this is where factually speaking, it is wrong when people say that you can't run extended intervals. However, on the flip side, factually speaking, you need to be careful and do your research if you're going to run longer intervals. And that's all I'm trying to get by on this video. So if you want to run, you know, 9,000, 12,000 mile intervals or even up to the 20,000, you got to go to a company like Blackstone or whatever, you know, I don't know who else does oil testing. I've just gone to these guys before and then test your oil. However, here's the thing, right? I've done probably whatever, 10 oil changes, maybe more in this interval, just given the mileage of stuff. And you know, these are 40 bucks a pop, right? So 40, 80, so $160 worth of, worth of changes or paying for um, testing here, right? I mean, that's $160 I could have just put toward oil at a shorter interval. There's some time penalty of doing that and whatever too. So food for thought, right? Is it even worth doing or is it just quicker and easier to change at five? You have to ask yourself that. You have to make the determination yourself. But long story short, like I said, if you go to an oil testing company, they will be able to tell you for your specific vehicle what it can withstand. 
The other thing is, real quick, you can pull an oil sample through the dipstick tube and not necessarily change the oil, and then you can see if it can still be ran. So if you have like a diesel truck that takes 15 quarts of oil, it might be worth doing that so that you don't change it prematurely um, and then really kind of figure out how long you can go with it. Lastly, if your use case changes drastically, like it did here, you gotta factor that in. You gotta shorten up those intervals. If you are running an engine that has overhead cams and very tight oil passages, variable valve timing, all that kind of stuff, cylinder deactivations, any of these more modern engines, you may or may not get different results than I get. So you need to don't take my data as if it applies to you directly. Take it as a data point for you to say, okay, that works on his combinations. I'm going to see what works on my car and get the, get the test data, right? This is more of a process of how to find the things out I found out, not to use my data for your car. I, I guess my biggest takeaway with all this, really, is just kind of understanding the fact that there is so much to oil, oil analysis, and how long it's actually going to last in a specific application. That the only way to be 100% sure that your oil is properly being maintained is to get it sent out to a lab like Blackstone and tested relatively frequently. Now that's gonna start getting expensive. So I think the best compromise then is to get it tested multiple times doing your normal daily life and then determining you know the maximum you can run and then giving yourself a bit of a safety factor. If that happens to be 5,000 miles, well then hey, maybe it's 5,000, maybe it's 10,000. Um, and then if you drive that vehicle different, if you tow a lot on one oil change, you might wanna change it sooner. The other option is whether, if, if you trust the manufacturer's interval and oil type, this truck, for example, has an oil life meter. The interval is every 10,000 miles on factory oil or when the change oil light goes on. The change oil light will automatically go on at 10,000 miles or sooner, okay? The reason for that is because they program it such that if you're running high enough engine load and high enough RPM, it's supposed to calculate, roughly speaking, how worn out that oil is. Now, how good do those systems work? You be the judge, but that is the arguably best way to manage your oil change interval because that is what the manufacturer says that engine is supposed to do. Now, the manufacturer also says, not to go on a tangent, that this truck doesn't need rear end fluid and front end fluid for 150,000 miles. So I don't know how much I trust even that, that's a whole nother thing I don't have data for, so I'm not gonna speak to, but just food for thought, right? Um, as far as the engine oil is concerned, point of this video, that is the number that Ford gives me for this 7.3 liter engine, gasoline engine. I'm just trying to keep this as emotionless and opinionless of a video as possible. And I genuinely don't have a strong opinion on this. I really don't. I My opinion is, if you want my opinion, Get the data and follow the data, which is not really an opinion, right? <laughs> like that's that's the way to do it. Get the data, and then there's no question what you need to do. So that's that. Anybody who tells you otherwise is just wrong. Like there's not, they're just they're incorrect. There is ways to quantify what you can do, and there's a specific YouTube channel, and I'm not going to mention names. There's a specific YouTube channel that just absolutely preaches the 5,000 mile change interval and has zero data to back it up. And that is frustrating to me. I'm presenting data to you in this video and telling you, go out, get your own data, and develop an oil change interval personalized to your car if you so choose. Otherwise, follow the manufacturer's recommendations. Those are factual statements, right? Factually, that is the best way to, to uh, change your oil the way the manufacturer tells you to. Um, or if you want to, go less than that. But don't think it's necessarily the be-all, end-all, hallelujah, save the world. All right? So anyway, with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching. God bless America. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.